available? Single and available? Single and available? That's me! That's me! I'm single and available! I'm single and available if anybody wants to know. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go now. Okay, I'm single and available though. Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Um, this video has kind of gone viral. Uh, it's a gal on TikTok, as all videos of anybody anymore <laughs> is on TikTok. And she's been asking this question of, of hey, are, are guys like this? Are, are men, do men just hit it and quit it? And this gal's got to be mid-30s, I think, maybe even later 30s. And I watched the video. And I realized women have been the same, not only in in my entire life, which is, I mean, I started paying attention to women maybe around, I don't know, 13 or so. So that's at least 37 years. Um, women have been the same all my life, and they were the same before that because my my parents kind of taught me what I do, should and shouldn't do when dating women. And one of the things was to be a gentleman and not – not be a pig and be nice to the father so he doesn't think that I'm just trying to shack up with their daughter. So, but this is, this is knowledge coming from my parents. Uh, and they were married, you know, I think in the 1960s. Uh, yeah, it would have been late 19, late 1950s, early 1960s. So they knew the deal too. And of course you can watch movies from the 1960s and this is, this is common knowledge. It's been around for 60 years, maybe even plus. But for some reason, women still refuse to learn this lesson. And I just realized something. They're never going to learn. They're never going to learn how men think, how men operate, or, or they know how men think and operate, and they choose to ignore it when they're really attracted to a guy. Like, when, oh, he's super hot, and it's only the second date, and I totally know I shouldn't hook up with him, but he's super hot, and I'm going to do it anyway. And then they get burned, and something happens, and the guy bounces or floats on them or ghosts on them. And they're like, I can't, oh, how awful. And then they go out and do it again and again and again until they're 35 like this gal. And, and now they're in desperation mode wanting to settle down. But they can't settle for the average guy and they can't stop sleeping with the bad boys. And, and this, the next generation is learning the same thing and so on and so on. This is, this is just how women are now. I think they've always been like this, if we're to be honest about it, but because of social norms and morals and values that were instilled, whether it was by parents, by church, uh, by the education system, which was way different before uh, the education system became nationalized, women were taught, hey, yes, you're going to want to do this stuff, but if you do it, people are going to think poorly of you. And you're, you're going to probably end up being a mom, a single mom. And instead of now, you know, it used to be you'd have it and maybe give it up for abortion. Before that, you were traveling, having the kid and giving it to a nunnery or, or leaving it with your, you know, a, a family relative all of a sudden. Coming back, the gal would finish school and then maybe go back and pick up the kid because she didn't want to be known as the girl that put out when she wasn't married, got pregnant and so on and so forth. But because social, social, the, because of the social moral decay, now it's no longer a big deal. But women still haven't learned how men operate. And, and men, honestly, should change the way they operate, but they're not going to because it's lizard brain stuff. You know, you put an attractive woman in front of a guy and she says, hey, do you want to sleep with me? Guys don't have, don't have the risk of do I know her? Should I, was she going to do this and leave me in a bad way? Am I going to get pregnant and get, you know, strung, strung up in a, in a bad way or, or have something bad happen to me? Guys are just kind of like, well, yeah. And even then the young men that, that did the deed and maybe got a girl pregnant, their fathers or family shipped them off into the military to get them the heck out of Dodge and maybe get some, some rational, you know, control in their lives. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this and this gal here. But before I do, there's something else I want to do. And I want to take just a minute to do this because I do think it is important. Recently, I've been seeing a lot of, especially on Twitter, uh, a lot of red pill guys out there talking. And, get, and that's what my other video is about today. And they're either giving bad advice or, 
or they're not living up to their own standards, or uh, in many cases, I think they're paying for girls and and not actually not actually dating them or or learning how to to talk to them. And I think they're just going out there, spending some money, getting some video and photo shoots, and then trying to sell a book or something else. I don't know what's going on with these communities. Not all of them, of course, but there's a lot of, of people out there that that don't understand, uh, at least don't understand how dating really works. And in many of my posts and many of my videos and many of my comments, people are coming on my channel and saying, uh, and, and you guys don't see it very often in the comments here on YouTube, but I do see it on Twitter when I post something and then someone wants to insult me. And they, they, they call men that are red pill or that decide not to date or decide that they want to do a different thing in life. They call them incels. They call them losers. They call them butthurt who just can't get women. I know many of you can get women, but because I'm a content creator and you guys listen to me for my thoughts on things, I wanted to give you a little bit of rundown, like a very quick rundown of my past, not the, the details the day by day, but the fact that I was married at 19, no wait, I take that back, married by 21 and divorced by 22 because she left me for a guy that had a ton of money. I went into a tailspin. I decided I, I just, I didn't want to ever fall in love again. I just wanted to sleep with women. Did that till I was almost 30. And, and then I tried marriage again. It lasted for eight years. Uh, well, actually, we were together eight years. I think we were married for six and then she decided she wanted to pursue her career. And I went into another tailspin of where I just decided I'm never going to get married again. This isn't for me. I'm just going to hook up with women. And that's why I can say, you know, hey, hooking up with women is not going to make you happy. Getting married in many cases is not going to make, make you happy. I got out of it lucky because I didn't have any money. When I, was a, when I was a young buck, this is me at 19 years old, as I entered the military. And those of you that have, have been longtime viewers have seen me talk about this in my dating past before, but there's probably 100,000 new subscribers uh, that haven't seen the young buck that was uh, the young joker. And yes, I went out and I, I had my dalliances and I had my fun. And even though I was on the shorter side, I was relatively successful with women because I had a good game. I could, I could, I could kind of make them laugh and have fun. I, I pretended at least I had high values, even though I may not have. And I kept in good shape. And that carried through all the way till, you know, here, here I am in my late 40s. Uh, this is about, I think, four or five years ago. Uh, still in pretty good shape. Um, obviously, the hair is gone now. And this is when I just finished up with one of my workouts and I was feeling particularly muscular and good looking this day. And so I snapped. And this is when I was doing ultra marathons and, um, and, and doing my ultra marathon swim, ultra marathon running, doing Tough Mudder events uh, and doing CrossFit. And I was in darn good shape. And here I still had no problem attracting women, even though I haven't gotten any taller. And gosh knows I haven't gotten any better looking <laughs> you know, over the years. And, and you know something in this photo, I was, I was single and I was happy, a lot happier than, than the young man that was going around chasing tail and trying to impress women. When I was young, I went so far as to buy, I was, it was in 1996, so I would have been 24 years old and I went out and bought a Mustang GT, brand new off the lot, loaded, loaded. I ended up driving and, and owning this for about a year in Florida and the car payment was about $400 a month because it was a pretty expensive car. Three eighty-five, dollars I think it was, a month. Now, that sounds cheap to you guys out there, but back in the day, that's kind of an expensive car back in 1996. And uh, the insurance payments in Florida, because I was living near Miami, was close to $400 a month. I could afford this for about a year uh, with my job that I had until I realized that, you know, to... I'd get too many speeding tickets if I couldn't control myself because it was a stick shift and a heck of a lot of fun. And it was costing me $800 a month, of which I did not really have. And, and I wanted to save up and kind of better myself, so I ended up selling it. But I didn't learn because after I got married and then I got divorced and I was in my, uh, what, late 30s, I think it was, I went out and I bought a... a, a a Corvette. Now the difference is this Corvette, when I bought it, I think it was 20, let me think, I think it was 2013 when I bought it. 
and this Corvette was 2011 or a 2001, sorry. This is like a, a C5 Corvette. My years may be a little off. It's been a long time. I don't remember, but I, if it's a 2001, maybe a 2002. And I bought it in like 2012, 2013, something like that. And, but I, st because number one, I always wanted to have a sports car. And number two, you want to talk about a car that got attention. This thing didn't have a scratch on it. It was beautiful. And even though it was 12 years old, it only had 6,000 miles on it because the father bought it for his kid for a graduation present from, from graduating from Duke University in North Carolina. And his kid wanted a BMW instead and rich daddy doctor uh, got him the BMW and stuck this in the garage and, and just drove it around a little bit here and there to have fun with it and then decided to sell it. So I got it on a steal and a dream. And I had this for, for quite a few years. Could I afford it? Yes. Should I have afforded it? I don't know. Because I only put about 5,000 miles on it in three or four years because it was so nice. I didn't want to get stone chips and dings and, and rocks and everything on it. But I'll tell you, it got me the attention of the ladies. And so when I was a, a young 30-something guy or late 30-something guy, um, I think in this photo, I'm, I'm later 30s in this one. I don't remember exactly. You can see, still see I had some hair, but it was starting to thin on top. I was going to the clubs. I was hanging out with friends. I was drinking. I was partying it up. And I had no problems getting attention from women. Um, these are something I would do is I would get social validation. In other words, you go to the same bar quite often. You get to know some guy friends. You get to know the bartenders. You kind of get known around the place. Then you make friends with some of the women and people see that you're you're social and, and comfortable and, and you can joke around with everybody and everybody likes you. And that gives you some value. And because of that, I could go in there many times and talk to the female friends that I had and who were, were not bad looking. I'm not saying they're models by any way, uh, but they weren't bad looking. Um, I think many of you would say, hey, you know what? She'd make a cute girlfriend. And then from there, other women would see me hanging out with a bunch of, you know, pretty good, decent looking girls. And that gave me social value. And then when I went up to talk to them and had a joke, I was already kind of pre, uh, pre accepted because they saw me speaking to other women and other women laughing and having a good time with me and, and enjoying my time. And so they didn't feel like I was a creep or a weirdo. Things were much different back then because we didn't have the dating apps and everything like that. Moving forward, I traveled around the world. And again, as I've stated many times, this is not because of the bug. This is because of very dusty roads driving a motorcycle in the Philippines. But as I did my travels, I still always was hanging out and sleeping with various women, whether it was Southeast Asian women or women in Australia or women in, I think this was Iceland, uh, or you know, women as I was uh, backpacking across Norway uh, or uh, a, a, uh, a Ukrainian woman that was in uh, Poland at the time and, or here in the United States. I never really had any problems dating. I want to tell you guys this because a couple of things. Yes, things have changed. Yes, things are way better overseas. Um, but I'm a five foot six, five foot seven guy. Um, I'm not in great shape now. I've gained quite a I won't even lie, I've gained quite a bit of weight just working around the buildings and I haven't been doing my my gym and my diet properly, which I've I've, I've said I was going to start multiple times and then I get caught up on something else and, and I just don't. But in the same token, it's not a priority for me to have like an amazing six-pack body and look really good in a tight t-shirt anymore. Now I just want to be healthy and, and I want to feel good and I want to be strong and, and I don't want to have any like physical problems. That's really where, where my mindset is now today. But as a younger man, or even as, a, as an older dude, like here in my early or mid 40s, I think, um, you know, I was running ultra marathons. I was going to the gym at five foot six or five seven, and this is going back five years ago. So it's not like we're going back to the Stone Age. I could still talk to women, I could still get phone numbers, uh, I could still get dates. And it's not because I'm all that, you know, it's not because I'm all that. It's because I have the ability to, to communicate and talk to women, okay? So, so I, I wanted to mention this because when we get to this video here, when I say things are always the same, I mean they're always the same. Women have a tendency that if they're attracted or they get the butterflies, they will sleep with a man. 
in my day when I was younger, it was you met them in pubs or clubs or bars. You had to have really good game. You'd go up, you'd strike a conversation. Um, you'd be funny. They'd get a laugh. And then you would stop talking to her and go talk to your guy friends. And then you'd go up and talk to another woman. And then you go talk to your guy friends. Then you'd shoot a game of pool. Then you'd come up and order a beer. And then as you swing back around, around and maybe you didn't talk to the woman for half an hour or 45 minutes, you come back up and you say something interesting. I'm still nursing the same beer. Do you want, want me to put a little, you want me to put a little rubber, a baby, baby nip on there and you can take your time on it? And she'd laugh or no, I'm just here. For, and you have that banter and conversation. But once that happens, you'd be surprised how quickly and easily they will sleep with you if if you're in pretty good shape and you have a really good gift of gab. Now, it may be a little bit tougher now, but there are women out there that say they'll only sleep with six foot or they only date six foot or they only date millionaires. Or they, and that same woman will sleep with a dude that works at Taco Bell and uh, he's five foot nine because he's funny, he's charming, he's in good shape. And she's had a couple of beers. That, and that's just, it's still that, that same way as it is today. So I mention this because you guys that don't get out there, don't date, don't put yourself out there because you're listening to guys like myself or anybody else that says, hey, it's a mess out there in dating. I want you to go out and still attempt it because there's women like this that haven't learned the lesson and they go out and do the same thing over and over and over again. And you... You know, they will make that mistake with you too. <laughs> that's, that's the great news. Now, you may not want to necessarily sleep with women but I'm, and, and you want maybe a relationship or something like that. But my whole point is it is possible because women refuse to learn their lessons. So let's listen to her give the same speech and the same lesson that all women do over the course of time with the same results. I need the girls to weigh in on this because I can't tell if I'm being completely irrational or unreasonable. So I've been seeing this guy and we've seen each other a couple of times at this point. We decided to have dinner the other night. She says she's seeing this guy and they've, they've, she's seen him a couple of times, which means one couple is two. A few times is three or more. I don't know if you guys know this, but a couple is two, which means she's seen him a couple times. One time, second time she takes him home. So we go out to dinner, we both have a couple of glasses of wine at dinner, and then we go back to his place together. This is my first time at his place, and I think we all can assume what happened from there. We can assume what happened from there because this is how modern women are, who can't control themselves. She had a couple of glasses of wine. He's good looking. He invites her to her place. She can't control the tingles. She gets excited, and she goes, yeah, and we can assume what happened from there, which is I slept with him. So I'm going home and he walks me to my car, thankfully. And as we're saying goodbye, he tells me to text him when I get home. Courteous, right? It took me about 20 minutes to get home. So by the time I'm home, it's around 2 a.m. I text him that I made it home safely and he doesn't respond. So he texts me back the next morning and he's like, glad you made it home. Okay. He obviously fell asleep, but I just feel like given the circumstances, I'm a new girl that you're seeing. We both had a couple of glasses of wine with dinner. We just hooked up and I was driving home late at night. I feel like he should have stayed awake to make sure I made it home okay. Obviously I get it that late at night, no one wants to stay up, but like when you're dating, don't you wanna make sure she made it, especially as a guy. I mean like I don't have many means to defend myself, like should something happen. I don't know. I just feel like he should have made sure I made it home okay. Is that unreasonable? I mean, it was like 2 a.m., so I get it. But at the same time, I'm like, mm, I don't know. I need What's funny is she still got the, the text and the call the next morning when he said, hey, glad you made it home okay. That's, I mean, that's more than a player would do. That's a guy that's at least like, okay, I got my rocks off. Um, and after a couple glasses of wine, he decided, ah, she'll be fine. And then he went to bed. She wants the, and, and now she says, uh, th when you're seeing each other, he never said that they're seeing each other. See, this is, the, this is what women do. Is go, she's gone on a couple of dates. She has a couple of glasses of wine. Her inhibitions goes down. He probably doesn't have any because he's a dude. They hook up. He's nice to her. He walks her to the car. He, she goes home. 
he, he probably crashes out. And in the morning, he responds to her. And now she says, when you're seeing somebody. This is, she put the bedroom ahead of the relationship, as they always do now, or at least most of the time they do. And he got his rocks off and then he went to bed. Now, he will see her again. That's the good news. And how do I know this? Because he responded to the text saying, hey, glad you made it home. Okay. Does, that, does he look at her as girlfriend material? No. Why? Because on the second date, she slept with him. He doesn't really care that badly. And this is what women do the same thing over and, and oh, and, and does he see her as are they seeing each other? No, he does not think that at all. How do I know this? Because this is the way I used to operate. When I was a young guy, we'd go out, I'd meet somebody. Like I said, when you go to the pubs, you get phone numbers and things like that. It wasn't always the one night stand, although a lot of times you could. Instead, you'd get her number. You'd message her a couple of times. And guys, I cannot tell you how many times this happened to me directly especially if you have good text game and you're funny and you're interesting on your first conversation. You can tease them over text. You can flirt with them over text. And yes, you, she can will come over to your place and bring a bottle of wine or she will invite you over to her place or you go out for a quick uh, couple of drinks at the pub and then straight back to her place. It happened for me in my 40s. It happened for me in my 30s. It happened for me in my 20s. It's always the same. And women have yet to learn that there are men, like I used to be, and there are a lot of guys that still are, that will say, hey, I'm, I'm in this for the hookup. I'm in this for the having fun. If a woman said to me or says to guys, uh, at least honest guys, she says, I'm looking for a long-term relationship. I want something that's – I tell you now, I used to say, oh, I'm not really into that. I'm just kind of goofing off and having fun. You never know if you meet the right somebody, maybe something might happen. But other than that, I'm just kind of doing the casual thing. You'd be surprised how many women would say, oh, that's cool. I totally get that. And then you hang. Now, it, this wouldn't be on a date. This would be like if you're asking for a phone number or in a club or something or other. But she still sees you out having fun. She sees you're sociable and she'll think to herself, I bet I could change him. I bet I, bet I could convince him that I would make a good girlfriend. I bet I can change his mind. And so you'd flirt a little bit more, maybe hook up that night, maybe get the number, later on hook up. And then after hooking up for a couple of times, you get the, well, what are we texts? What are we? What are we doing? You know, and I, I would inevitably say, but what do you mean, what are we? We're, we're going on dates and hooking up. She'd say, yeah, but I told you I just wanted a serious relationship. Yes, uh, yes, you told me that. And I told you I was just hooking up and having fun. And then they get mad at you, even though you told them right up front what your plans were and what you were doing and what's going on. And then they get angry with you, like it's your fault, like you trick them or you convince them to sleep with you. And it's the same game that's been going on for all of time. And then she, instead of taking an accountability for, for maybe what she's done, she blames you. Now the difference is back when I was a, a younger guy, she just get get mad at you and, and call you an a-hole or something or other. Now, what women like to do is they like to say that you're the bad guy, that you, you somehow manipulated her, and then all of a sudden you're getting in trouble with the law or the school system if you're in college or your employer because she decides to dox you or social media or she files a civil suit against you, you know, 18 years later, whatever. That's the the litigious system that we have now where – but women have never taken accountability for this stuff. I wanted to talk about this because so many men today have the wrong mindset about dating and about women. Women are not awful creatures. They just have a set of hardwired rules in their brain that they operate by. And if you don't understand it, it's confusing. If you do understand it, it's predictable. Guys, if you want to date, if you want to sleep with women, get in shape. Get comfortable talking to people. Be able to, to crack a quick joke and be funny and be interesting. That's why, you know, most of these, most of these people that I, whether it was in Asia or whether it was in Europe or whether it was 
you know, here in the United States or in Australia or Poland or wherever, most of these women knew me for less than two or three hours, one or two hours. Either they picked me up because I was hitchhiking and they gave me a ride for a while. And then we'd talk and maybe stop in for a place and a bite to eat. And we struck it up. And then, and then they wanted to continue giving me a ride, if you know what I'm saying, for a little while. Or I go to Southeast Asia, contact them ahead of time, vet them, make sure they're not some professional, that they're actually a, you know, a girl that has a normal job and wants the, to give a guy the quote-unquote girlfriend experience for a couple of weeks and she can take some time off from her job. That's what I did. There's ways to work the system that work for you. And that's what guys do. That's what we do because we're either A, smart, B, pigs a little bit, a little bit. They just want to sleep with women or like C, all of the above. And it's always been the same. And women can't understand it because they refuse to learn. You either, women are confusing to you or you understand them and it's predictable. Women, women should be able to say, Men are either confusing if you haven't been in the dating world or don't pay attention, or men are predictable. The problem with women like this is she acts like she's confused, but she's not confused. She's predicting what will happen next because it's happened to her before, and it will happen to her again. She just ref she and others like her refuse to understand the dating game and the mating game and how this works. And if a woman if a woman really really wanted to date a guy and have a boyfriend, I think we could all agree she should meet a guy, date him for an extended period of time. When I say extended period of time, at least multiple dates, get to know him. Does he legitimately want to have a girlfriend? Does he want to date? Do you get to meet some of his friends? Do you go to his place? Does he come to your place? And, and then you kind of explore the bedroom a little bit more because the player guy, the guy like I was when I was in my mid-20s and mid-30s, that player guy is going to get bored. He's going to say, yeah, you know, I, there's other girls at the bar. I'm going out with my friends this weekend. I'll find a hookup. And he goes, he, like he just evaporates. How do I know? Because I was that guy at one point in time. And I, you'd just be like, no, nah, I'm not going to waste my time with that because I have other choices. I have other things to do. I can go have more fun elsewhere. So the bad boys evaporate. Now, when I wanted to date and when I did want a girlfriend, then I was a good guy. She'd say, I want to wait. And I'd say, hey, oh, that's cool. And we go on multiple dates and I get to know her a little bit. And then I said, hey, I kind of like this one. And then they became a girlfriend. The guy that is the player can become the boyfriend. And the boyfriend can go right back to being the player. Women don't understand that because they think they understand men and that all men are pigs. Well, the top, the top percent of men that have a lot of choices, they're kind of pigs. Then there's a subset of men down below there that they're going to take advantage. And if they go on a date and she's up for getting down, a, a guy will be into that. But he, then he disqualifies her as the girlfriend. Because he says, well, she's easy, and I don't want an easy woman because she likely will cheat on me or hurt my feelings or ditch me or something else. And so he, dis he, he qualifies her as a bedroom par partner and disqualifies her as a girlfriend. I've done this as well. Many of you guys have done this as well. What the, what the red pill is about, it's not hating women. It's not being angry at women. It's not, it's not saying just sleep with them and, and use them. The red pill is about understanding their nature. And, and once you understand their nature, then you understand, sometimes I will sleep with them and just have some fun. Other times I'll meet one that I think is special and she's a little bit different. And, and other times uh, I'm going to be alone and enjoy my time and they're not worth messing with. And it just depends on in where your life you are during that cycle. And if you meet the right one and she does, but the, see, this is where things start getting messed up too, is because now, because of the internet and because of uh, Twitter and Reddit and, and TikTok and these other things, now you've got women giving other women advice like, hey, if you meet a guy and you really like him, don't sleep with him, make him wait, make him think you're high value. In the meantime, you can sleep with all the, all the other guys you're normally sleeping with or your side pieces 
And then when, you know, you you think you're ready, then you can sleep with him and he'll think you're high value. It's manipulation. That's part of the reason why I am against some of the quote unquote red pill content creators that tell you, hey, um, fake your Instagram account and make it look like you're rich and famous and, and you know, wear a fancy watch and, and money and, and uh, tell women that you're really into them and that you care about them even though you don't. And, and who cares because they're just stupid, you know, women and it's okay to manipulate them to sleep with them. I'm just as against that as I am against women manipulating. And, and it's not that I think, it's not that I think you, you, you can't, or it's not that I think that, it, uh, that maybe some women don't deserve it because some women do deserve it. It's not that. It's that if you're going to complain about things being bad in the dating world, if you're going to complain about women cheating on their boyfriends, if you're going to complain about the way things are, you have to make sure that you're not part of that problem. And so have I, you know, have I seen my friends? Have I been in situations where I know guys are, and guys I know, guys I, I like, my friends, I know some of them were sleeping with married women, especially when I was in the military. You know, I know they were rolling up to a sergeant who's out on deployment or or, um, or he, he's off base or whatever. I know some of my single, younger guy friends rolled up to married women's houses and hooked up with wives. Now, as an older guy, I can look back and reflect and say, my God, what an awful thing to do to a guy. You know, what an awful way to be to somebody. Uh, you know, it ruins his life. It, it ruins, and he doesn't even know about it. But I mean, someday he'll, he's probably going to find out, you know, it, it's it's not good. But at the time when I'm that young buck, I, I'd look at the world much differently. And I'd say, yeah, well, who cares? If it's not my friend sleeping with her, it, it'd be some other dude that's sleeping, like somebody's going to sleep with her. So if she wants it to be my friend, why should I care? That's kind of a valid mindset too. It's not that there's necessarily – it's all wrong. I mean, at some point, it's all kind of wrong. But it's not that there's right or wrong. It's what are, the, what are the rules and what are the guidelines that we set? And are we as, as good men, as, are we as mature men, as, are we, as, as responsible men, are we going to separ separate ourselves from this enough to where we can say we're not part of the problem anymore? It's one of the reasons why I don't think men should be – paying money to the only fools girls because you're perpetuating the problem. And those guys say, yeah, but there's a hundred thousand other guys that are paying five bucks a month. So who cares if she makes half a million a year, she's only making $5 for me. And I want, okay, but you are part of that problem. If all the men said no more, only fools goes away. If guys stopped hooking up with women on one night stands, yes, women, it wouldn't stop women's nature because they'd, they'd still have hookups and one-night stands. They'd just do it with married guys. But what if those married guys didn't do it? Well, it, it would force women to behave well, but it wouldn't change their nature. They'd still want to. They'd still look for the opportunities to do it. It's just like if you make, um, you know, a, being a streetwalker at night illegal, women still do it. You know, they, they do it to their detriment. So you can't control women's nature. And once you understand that, then you can decide where in the where in where in that playground, where in that that field of dating you're going to fall. This woman has the same problem that most women do. They they are confused by men or they understand how men operate but refuse to come to terms with it. I think most most men understand the game. They understand how women operate, at least red pill guys do. You know, blue pill and, and simps don't understand women at all. But red, red pill men understand they need to hold masculine frame. They, not, they need not to put up with BS. Uh, and they're going to make their move and take their shot. And if a woman lets them, they're going to do it. And if a woman says no, but he wants a girlfriend, he's going to date her. And if she says no and he doesn't want a girlfriend, he's going to move on. These are, have been in stone for forever. Just women like this just don't understand it. They refuse to, and then they're unhappy when they get the results of their own actions.
Uh, guys, as always, uh, if you like my work, please join us on betterbachelor.locals.com. Uh, we've got a movie night tonight. Uh, tonight we're going to do a Top Gun. And we're going to do Top Gun Maverick, a couple of great movies uh, tonight. So if you want to become a supporter, come on over there, join Gosh, a couple hundred guys that are in on the movie streams, having a good time, sharing memes, sharing a laugh. We do it every Saturday night. Make sure to come over and check it out. We'll have a good time. We'll see you in the next one. Mm-hmm.